One. Good. Okay. So my name is Jagis. I'm actually from Osh, but now live in Bishkek. I um, am really actually happy to meet all of you in this um, hangout, I would say. And um, I made an announcement on my Instagram that we would be um, meeting up with some, with some girls who studied abroad, really cool ladies. In the normal world, we would probably meet uh, somewhere in a cafe or restaurant, but I'm glad that we have this online platform where we can um, meet and to chat. Um, so, I, because I work in education and I um, have a company that is about studying abroad, uh, we help students apply and uh, uh, basically get the whole process, and then we help students go abroad. We send them to various programs, short term language and uh, university degree programs as well. Um, and I'm really, really curious about um, stories, right? But success stories of people who have studied abroad, who um, have done some career in the field that they're interested in. And I would love to hear your story because you each have a very unique and different story. And, you are where you are probably also because of your education, maybe partially, maybe, um, maybe more than that. Um, so yeah, I would love to start with some questions and then maybe you answer um, in, the, um, in, in terms. My questions will be basically uh, about why did you decide? Why did you decide? Because not everybody maybe has this motivation. Right? Some, some people may think like, oh, well, it's pretty cool out here. Why, why should I go somewhere else? And how did you apply so that if you can remember your process, how, how it was, because the reality then was very different from, from uh, the processes that our students undergoing now. And probably if you can recall some of the best moments, uh, the best things about the studies abroad, some challenges that we've had, um, and thanks to study abroad, like what opportunities were you exposed to, what people were you exposed to, um, what ideas that you probably wouldn't otherwise when you were, if you stay back home. And at the end, probably your advice to um, aspiring young people, or to those who may be thinking of studying abroad, but I'm sure. Um, so yeah, let's kick off and whoever wants to start, there you go. I think I'm maybe. So basically for those who didn't hear well, the question was, um, Tell about your um, <coughs> education. So first, why? Yeah, why did you decide to apply? And we can go one by one. One mm -hmm. question. So, yeah. yeah, why did I decide to go abroad? Uh, is to get international education because um, I always thought European uh, education is uh, uh, prestigious, is great, uh, it's uh, better than that uh, in my country, at, at least at uh, that time. It was in uh, 2006 that I applied uh, and I finished school, so I thought uh, it would be uh, great to have European diploma uh, and that's why I applied, basically. Well, let see. Sorry? And we see, so we'll go one by one. Okay. Uh, first of all, first of all, um, I wanted it's. I, I didn't want to do studying after school. Uh, I, I wanted to just to go abroad and have my experiences. Uh, and uh, to study abroad, it was just uh, like a, a pretext. Pretext. Mm -hmm. What again? Uh, I can uh, <coughs> pretext. Pretext. Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, le, le pretext. Yes, yes, it's like a pretext. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. I have no okay. idea what it is, but uh, I'll figure it out. So me, for me, studying abroad like was just a pretext to go abroad. Because you can't go abroad with uh, um, like that, <laughs> like that, yes. Mm. And that's why I I choose. Uh, uh, I I didn't think about what work I want to do, who I want to be. Um, I, I wanted to just uh, 
the study and I studied uh, literature because it was very general. Mm. And uh, I thought that uh, studying something that, uh, uh, that, that you like afterwards would um, open you uh, other opportunities. You can choose, mm. then you can choose what you like. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, to choose economica for me, mm -hmm. I was not good in math, for example, I was not good at school. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I, uh, I, I, I choose something general, uh, sure that I, I liked because I'm not, I was not zadrot. Um, uh, like a botanist or like a, a nerd? Nerd. You want to say nerd, maybe? Yes, I was a Russian not version nerd. of a botanist. Yeah. So you didn't yes, like. You probably are now, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was uh, because uh, of uh, that. I was not nerd. I couldn't choose something like uh, very serious studies. Mm. You know. Okay. Like medicine, doctor, <laughs> or economic, or. It was not uh, me. That's true, okay. And Regina? Oh, Regina? I hope she's here. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, maybe she can join us later, she can respond later. Yeah, maybe she's busy, yeah, she's happy to meet you. So, um, my next question is, how did you apply, but also before your application, how did you decide on where you want to go? Like, because you went to different universities in different countries, how did you decide it's supposed to be this country, this city, or this university? Oh, well, and eventually this program. And how did you apply? Well, I did my studies in France, <laughs> and I'm currently living in France. And why did I choose France? It's because of one very one uh, travel I did with my high school when I was uh, mm. 11, 12 years old. Uh, it was an exchange program uh, where uh, we, as a group of uh, Kazakh students from Almaty, went to uh, Rennes in the north uh, west of France uh, mm -hmm. for a trip. Uh, it was a two-week uh, trip to Rennes and Paris. And there I uh, lived in a French family. I went to French mm -hmm. college. So I was exposed to this new culture for me. And at the time, I didn't speak French at all. I couldn't even say, uh, when we were like having dinner with my French family, I couldn't even say, can you please pass the salt, you know, or bread. I couldn't say simple words, but somehow, like, I survived, we understood each other. And when I came back, I was motivated to study French more and more. I was yeah. uh, really in love with Paris, with all its beautifulness, culture, you know. Um, and I loved the country, I loved the people. And from then on, I started studying hard uh, the language. And then mm -hmm. uh, I thought, I'm quite good at languages, so maybe I should continue studying French and English because that would open doors for me. And uh, then I thought, well, everyone else is going to England and in England, well, the tuition cost may be high. So why don't I go to France? In France, the tuition fees almost nothing. It was like 200, 300 euros a year. So when I applied, uh, I got accepted and I was really happy about it. How did you choose a university? I've uh, chosen Université Lumière Lyon 2 University and I uh, studied Administration Économique et Sociale, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, studies about like management studies, social administration, you know, studies very general. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to apply? How was the process? Can you repeat, please? Was it difficult to apply? Like, how was the process for you? Well, uh, I applied by myself. 
Um, at that time, I was in Alliance Française. It's a French institute uh, for French language in Almaty, where I uh, was having classes. And my French teacher advised me to go to Lyon because it's a great uh, town. It's big. It's very young. There are a lot of students, great universities. And uh, they helped me also with applying. So Alliance Française helped me with applying and I prepared the, you know, all the documentation. I translated it from Russian and Kazakh to French. And I also uh, had to pass an exam, a test de connaissance de français. Uh, and I had a good uh, grade. So that helped me to get in basically. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And me also, I, I made this trip uh, when I was in high school mm. and also I liked, uh, I loved it because it was very different from Kazakh school. In Kazakh school I was very asocial and I had, it, it was, I didn't, I didn't feel my, myself very good and when I went to there in the school, I, I had a lot of friends. I was, um, I, I loved, uh, I loved the um, uh, the country and the uh, ambience, mm -hmm. like, ambience, environment, ambience. ambience. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I like the <laughs> ambience and. Uh, Yes, my goal was to go to France, but as I said to you, I, I didn't what, what I didn't uh, was a, a, a good student, a serious student who studies a lot. I um, I failed the uh, test. I, I failed the uh, language test. Yes, uh -huh. I, I failed language test, uh, mm -hmm. test, and I was very um, I was very. Um, I had disappointed, yes, and then I, I said uh, that I wanted to go, even even if I'm not serious uh, student, I want to go abroad, mm -hmm. and and then uh, my mother said to me, okay, um, you can. And my my mother uh, found uh, with Alliance uh, that there were courses of French in Sorbonne. Uh, you know, um, one year, uh, yeah. one year of courses, two, two days, uh, two hours in a day, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you can try to to repass uh, this step. And mm -hmm. I, I made these courses, and uh, and then I I tried and I had a good uh, result. And I mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I, I studied in uh, Sor Sorbonne University, and, uh, and well, it was like this. <laughs> cool, cool. So your parents actually chose, like, founded, chose the school for you, and then they helped arrange everything. Uh, yes, with Alliance. I, I last mm -hmm, Alliance yeah. said that uh, yeah. yes, there are also, mm -hmm. and we were three girls, uh, me. Uh, Ellen, Elena, and Bibi Gould, three girls from Kedasa who, who went in France with nothing for these courses. Uh, and <laughs> and Allianz, he promised us a lot of things, but finally uh, they didn't um, do anything. And when we came, we didn't have a home, we didn't have a, um the place to live we had nothing oh <laughs> Actually, wow it, uh, adventure yes, it was a very uh, crazy experience wow and do you remember you... Aika? um you came <laughs> ah you were struggling to find an apartment right very very crazy <laughs> experience of <laughs> yeah especially in a huge town like paris yes yeah, challenge two three girls 18 years old <laughs> without uh, wow. parents without university without uh, home oh my god <laughs> wow um and regina if, if, if you're here if not we'll move on I guess we'll move on, right? Mm. <laughs> um, 
So what are the best things that you received, that you obtained from your study abroad experience, which you otherwise would not have uh, if you stay in public? Like, what were the things that the study abroad experience gave you? Well, as for me, it's <coughs> definitely like international exposure. I wouldn't have met that many people from different countries uh, if I were in Almaty, for sure. Um, in fact, I used to study one year at Kimep, uh, which, is all, which was also not bad, uh, but most of students are still Kazakh and Russians, and we didn't have as much as big international community there. So that was something I was missing, you know? I was always- did you, So did you do your exchange in Kazakhstan while studying in France? Uh, before going to France, after high school, I spent one year in Kimep mm. University. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I was always uh, interested in, uh, you know, uh, surrounding myself with international people from all over the world. And in France, I met so many people from like everywhere, the US, Korea, Thailand, uh, Morocco, Tunisia, England, uh, Canada, like, and um, so this international exposure um, opened my eyes like to the world. It gave me a lot of new friends as well. Um, also studying abroad um, gave me another way of um, how to say of studying like i i could i should only rely on myself like mm, independent um, yeah i was completely independent and i was responsible mm. for myself i i had to succeed you know um and uh, i was serious so uh, at the age of 18 quite young mm. I uh, had to start um, thinking um, on my own, you know, uh, taking responsibility and being independent. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you see? Uh, for me, that? for example, uh, I said to you that I was not a serious pupil, but in France, when I came into France, I, I, I was not serious pupil because I, I didn't uh, see a lot of possibilities. And when I came in France, uh, I, I became very serious pupil mm. <laughs> as a student uh -huh. because uh, it was very interesting to study in another language. Um, the subjects were very interesting. And I just pagruzitsa. Uh, um, Mm. Immersed. Wow. Immersed. Immersed yourself. Yes, mm. I, I just uh, immersed myself in studying, uh, studying and I, I couldn't um, stop it uh, now. And, um, and th this is the, the most beautiful thing that I, I could uh, uh, discover in, in studying abroad because uh, you, the system is another is another because when you are at school in Kazakhstan every time uh, uh, teachers they scream at you uh, that you are stupid uh, that uh, uh, you will never succeed you will <laughs> every time uh, you uh, you you hear it and when I came in France I, I saw that everybody wanted to help me uh, the professors were very nice they could uh, uh, they, they wrote my essay and they were very serious in transmitting the knowledge and there were also uh, Dr. Rand's uh, students who uh, in France it's uh, it is tutor Aika yeah. Yeah, yeah so they did tutoring to support mm. you in your studies okay. Yes, to support uh, other pupils, uh, students who are in, on uh, uh, bachelor, and uh, I, um, I, it was an opportunity for me, and I used all this, uh, all all this uh, proposal that gave me for a French university. Wow! Wow! 
And what were the problems that you had? Well, I heard of the story with the, the looking for an apartment, which sounds just crazy. But what were the other difficulties that you faced while you were studying abroad? Mm. Did, did you feel homesick, maybe? Oh, definitely. Yeah, in the first <laughs> probably two months, two, three months, I've been crying nonstop alone mm. in my studio in Lyon. Oh. I did not know almost uh, no one. Um, just one person I knew, I think, um, and that's all. So I felt mm -hmm. really alone, really homesick. Uh, I was every day on the phone with my family uh, who supported me, fortunately. So mm -hmm. it's, it was very important for me at that time uh, to get support from my family because uh, not only I felt alone, I also felt not understood and I couldn't understand anyone. Uh, I mean, not anyone, but my language level was not as, uh, as high as it, as it mm -hmm. is today. So now I speak fluently language but at that time uh, it wasn't the case so it I yeah, it was really challenging mm -hmm. wow. and you see and for me uh, no I, I, I it is not the same experience because when I came I, I said you that we were three girls and every time we, we were three and oh. we, uh, every time we met another people we together we, we go into club night clubs <laughs> and, and we, <laughs> and we um, um and we met a lot of people different people and uh, it was very fun but uh, did I, you have any any challenges or problems i don't know maybe with finding maybe part time job or um, uh, afterwards, some, but not uh, uh, yes. Afterwards, mm. I had the problems. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, trying to job. Yes, it was a, a little bit of problem. But uh, I found uh, I found the job. I was baby uh, nurse. I was a nurse, mm -hmm. and um, really and uh, and to to start ah uh, yes maybe to um, to find my work it was a uh, yes problem to find your work um, uh, your, your first work well even the challenge was to open a bank account at first mm -hmm. you know do all these administrative things you have to do when you arrive to a new country you know mm. and it's all in French <laughs> yeah and you should. <laughs> be accompanied by another person, a local or a person who speaks well the language and mm -hmm. uh, who understands all these banking issues, you know. Uh, so even uh, oh. like taking appointment could be a challenge at first, you know. Mm. Have you had to visit a doctor while you were studying? And how was it like? Uh, how difficult? <laughs> because it's all in French, right? Uh, do you, you mean in general or in my first year? Probably in general, maybe in the first year because it's usually more difficult, but like um, getting an appointment and visiting a doctor, like how difficult it can be for a student studying abroad, how it was for you? Well, first finding a good doctor could be difficult, mm. so it's better ask for recommendations, so don't hesitate to ask your friends who their doctors are so you could take an appointment uh, with a good doctor and then obviously yeah, it's not your country not your type of probably environment so you don't feel comfortable really but you have to overcome it and even if you don't understand something don't hesitate to ask questions uh, I well, from my memory, um, all the appointments were fine. I mean, I didn't have any health issues. I was not hospitalized, no operation, nothing. So just, just little, um, you know, doctor's appointments with after a cold or a flu or something. What is there happening, Lucy? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm with you, but I will go to a shop because you know, uh, uh, because uh, it will be closed all Saturday and Sunday. 
Oh, okay. Um, I'll try to wrap up quickly. So, but, but I'm with you. I'm with you. Ah, okay. Um, so if you can complete the sentence, what if I'll say, if I didn't go to France and study at this university, right, your university where you've been, I would not have this. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't see this, and I wouldn't. So, what kind of opportunities, basically, you had, you gained, you obtained, thanks to your experience in studying abroad? Well, personally, I wouldn't uh, probably travel that much. I wouldn't have international friends all over the world. I wouldn't have a European uh, diploma. I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't find a, a job uh, later here in Europe. I wouldn't be able to go for internship.